The UN is warning of the threat of famine in Gaza unless more supplies arrive soon. Much of the food entering the territory comes on trucks that are first inspected by Israeli officials at border crossings. Israel says that they are letting enough aid in, but that the UN is failing to distribute it. These trucks are Gaza's lifeline. Kerem Shalom is one of two crossings where Israeli officials check for items they say could be used by Hamas, which is widely regarded as a terrorist organization. Then the supplies are driven back to enter Gaza via the Rafah crossing with Egypt. Aid agencies say it's this system that's acting as a bottleneck and helping push Palestinians towards starvation. Israel is facing increased pressure and international criticism for blocking aid into the Strip. Israeli officials insist this isn't the case and say that the real problem is that the UN and other international organizations aren't capable of distributing the supplies once they get to Gaza. The problem is not on the Israeli side or the routes for humanitarian aid to come into Gaza. The problem, who will collect it and distribute it? And this is the main gap because the UN haven't adjusted themselves to this humanitarian operation here in Gaza. But UN officials say that's not true, and the number of trucks entering is far too low to meet the population's needs. Before the crisis and the war started on the 7th of October, there was 500 or 600 trucks coming in a day. And since that time, people have had a massive catastrophic humanitarian disaster upon them. So we need more entry points, one in the north, and we need other places for food to come into, rather than just the one crossing point at the moment. Even once food does arrive, there's no guarantee it'll end up in the hands of hungry people. Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry said on Thursday that this aid distribution centre in central Gaza had been hit by an Israeli attack, killing eight people and destroying desperately needed supplies. We get the aid and we distribute it to people. The people needed to come to get their Ramadan meals. Today they hit the warehouse and burned all the aid, including the dates. It's the second time in as many days that an aid site has been attacked. And a reminder that even as countries scramble to transport supplies to Gaza by air and sea, getting them there is only part of the struggle. Now, Israel's military has said that Israel will try to, and I quote here, flood Gaza with humanitarian aid amid international pressure to do more. I spoke to Balig Sladin earlier, he's a journalist in Tel Aviv, and I asked him if there was a contradiction between Israel saying it was going to increase aid to Gaza and then bombing a UN warehouse in Gaza. Well, not exactly. Uh, well, let's look at it and uh, see the bigger picture here. Um, uh, let's start with the airstrike in Rafah. The airstrike has killed a Hamas commander who was in charge of taking control of humanitarian aid that uh, uh, and of the humanitarian aid in uh, Rafah exactly. So, as well as an aid worker was killed. That's uh, that's correct. But uh, Israel made it clear that they won't allow Hamas members, including civilian authorities. So like the police that belong to Hamas, to control aid, neither to take it for its own people, for the Hamas militants, nor in order to distribute it for the civilian population. So the problem is that Israel is yet to set an alternative for Hamas authorities in the Strip. And we can confirm also that uh, there has been some attempts to convince some clans, so like big families in Ga Gaza, to take charge of the civilian population. But all of these attempts has uh, failed until now. On the other hand, officially, Israel has no issue against letting in uh, the uh, aid and the food supplies inside Gaza. A source from the military is telling me uh, just moments ago that uh, the war that we have is against Hamas, not the civilian population. And when I asked about the military's spokesperson uh, statement yesterday when he said flooding uh, Gaza with aid, the source is saying that uh, there will be uh, increase in aid getting in from air, land and sea in the coming days, attributing that to an increase of aid supplies from Arab countries, apparently because of Ramadan. OK, now we know that the aid coming by ship from Cyprus is expected to arrive today. Do we know yet how that will be distributed and how quickly? 
what I asked about that specifically, and uh, uh, the source is telling me that it's not clear yet who is going to be in charge of uh, security for that uh, shipment uh, specifically because the small pier is yet to be built. In fact, it's going to be taking uh, weeks and even months to build. And uh, the uh, construction companies, apparently a private company that will take uh, the uh, uh, mission on its own, uh, is yet to be found, uh, at least not uh, in completion. So uh, it's not yet clear who's going to distribu distribute that to the civilians in uh, northern Gaza. I asked DW correspondent Tanya Krima why Israel said it was going to, quote, flood Gaza with humanitarian aid while also attacking an aid centre in Rafa, killing and wounding dozens. Yeah, absolutely. But um, we still have to see what that actually means to flood uh, Gaza with aid and to see it really happening uh, on the ground. What we are seeing right now is actually uh, international efforts to diversify, uh, to bring in aid into Gaza after a lot of pressure um, has been put on Israel uh, to open more uh, land crossings, uh, which has not uh, really happened. On Tuesday, uh, uh, Israel has opened a new gate, uh, Gate 96, as they said, to let in six trucks uh, for the World Food Program. That's a direct way into northern Gaza. But um, aid organizations have said they need uh, more of those, uh, you know, land access because this is the quickest and fastest way to get aid into Gaza. And what we are seeing is, of course, uh, international efforts via the air to uh, drop uh, aid into Gaza, but also to open this maritime uh, corridor uh, where there's a ship now on the way expected uh, potentially potentially later today uh, to come to Gaza, but also the U.S. military wants to build a floating pier that will uh, take uh, some time. But we also heard, of course, from aid organizations that they're calling for a ceasefire so that uh, people can get uh, the aid uh, safely because it's the distribution in Gaza while a war is going on with all kind of logistical uh, obstacles as well. They're saying that it's so difficult to get the aid, especially into northern Gaza. Well, speaking to DW News, Israeli Army spokesman Elad Gorin said humanitarian aid agencies were the cause of problems with aid deliveries to Gaza. Often, there is hundreds of trucks worth of aid waiting on the Gazan side to be picked up. That is the biggest obstacle to aid reaching Gaza in need. The international organization do not have the capacity and have yet to take real steps to improve that capacity to distribute the humanitarian aid through the Gaza Strip, including the north. The issue is not with our inspection, but with the distribution capabilities of the international organizations. All right, for more now, I'm joined by Jamie McGoldrick. He is the UN aid coordinator for the occupied Palestinian territory. He joins me tonight from Jerusalem. Jamie, it's good to have you with us. I know you frequently go into the Gaza Strip, so talk to me. Describe the situation there at the moment. I just came back about two hours ago from Gaza. I was in Rafa and I was also in Gaza City. And I saw the pier that you mentioned there in your piece. I mean, clearly the situation is very desperate. We are struggling to get enough supplies into Gaza Strip for the north and the south. At the moment, we have around 200 trucks a day of goods coming in and we need 500. And that's because we're constrained by a, a very one, one crossing point which can handle 200, 250 a day. And that's mostly humanitarian. We need a good mix of private sector goods as well as our humanitarian goods. And in order for to push back this possibility of real food insecurity, in places in the north, for example, in Gaza City, Gaza City, I saw massive destruction of infrastructure of most buildings in the city have been destroyed. Yeah. There's about 250,000 people there who have received very little in the way of food supplies in the last uh, one month and more, yeah. other than you, you saw the airdrops and these type of things, but these are insufficient. The only way to get aid in and the, quality, the quantity that we need is by roads, the three roads that go from north to south and some entry points in the north for us to deliver properly. Otherwise, people will really struggle. Jimmy, Israel, as you're, I'm sure you're aware, says that the issue of aid is not with Israeli inspections, but rather with the distribution capabilities of humanitarian agencies. Is that true? No, it's not true. I mean, we have uh, 200 trucks come in a day. We, we get them from Israel's side. 
and it's not enough. Uh, before the crisis and the war started on the 7th of October, there was 500 or 600 trucks coming in a day. And since that time, people have had a massive catastrophic humanitarian disaster upon them. And we just don't have the, the numbers of trucks that come in, regardless of what Israel, in terms of process, is their maximum, which is 250 or at any given day. So if we got all of that in every day, it's still so much of a gap in terms of what we really need for the population. So we need more entry points, one in the north, and we need other places mm -hmm. for food to come into, rather than just the one crossing point at the moment. And until we change that, we're always going to be unable to address the full complement of needs of people there, food, medical, health, as well as uh, water sanitation and shelter. These are the life-saving issues that are under real strain at the moment because of the lack of supplies. And what has to happen for humanitarian aid to be safely transported in into the Gaza Strip and to get to the people? I mean, even today we saw Israeli troops taking aim and, and killing people in the territory. I mean, there's no indication that that's going to subside anytime soon. No, I think that there's a lot of desperation there that people haven't received regular food for a long time. And the, the convoys of food that come through are often challenged by these crowds and uh, ransacked because they're desperate and their families are desperate. And until we get a massive supply of food into the north and into the south and we flood the place with food, the desperation will not disappear. So it's so important for us to get as many trucks in every day possible, day in, day out. And if we don't get that, then there's always going to be that insecurity. There's going to be that instability. And therefore, you know, when troops are in that sort of situation, uh, anything can happen. We've seen many times the cases where people have been uh, shot and wounded in different situations as they wait for food. And we have to find a way of getting them to be less desperate. And that means opening up as many places as possible in order for enough aid to get in, both from the air and from the, the maritime corridors which are opening up. But these are not the answers. These are not alternatives to road transport. These are just an addition to it. Um, for example, the boat that's coming in uh, later this week, mm -hmm. uh, coming on the, the the maritime corridor from um, there's only 20 trucks worth on on board there and we can put um 30 40 trucks in in a day a regular day using the roads jamie mcgoldrin u.n aid coordinator for the occupied palestinian territory jamie we appreciate your time tonight thank you thank you